We're going to add one more uh, property to our list of properties that we use to solve equations, and it's called the multiplication property for equality. And it says that if A and B are equal, then so are A times C and B times C, as long as C is not equal to zero. Or the equation A equal B and the equation AC equal BC always have the same solution set. So you're free to multiply both sides of an equation by any non-zero number you want any time you want, and you'll always be sure that you haven't changed the solution set. Let's see how we can use this property. I have one-half x is equal to negative 3. I want to isolate x on the left side, just like I was doing in the previous lesson. But this time, I have one-half times x, and what I want is 1 times x. So instead of adding the opposite, what I'm going to do is multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So 2 times 1 half x, and then 2 times negative 3. So that's the multiplication property, and it says I'm free to multiply both sides by 2 anytime I want, and it won't change the solution set. But what it will do is it will give me 1x right here on the left side, and so I will have solved this equation. Now, 2 times 1 half x is the same as 2 times 1 half times x by the associative property of multiplication. The left side is negative 6. 2 times 1 half is 1 times x is equal to negative 6. And that's the same as saying x is equal to negative 6. So when I have a number other than 1 in front of x here, I can solve for x by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal of that number. Here's another example. I have 3a is equal to 48. I don't want 3a. I want 1a. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 3. So 1 third times 3a on the left side, and then 1 third times 48 on the right side. So I've multiplied both sides by 1 third. 1 third times 3a is going to be 1a. I won't show that associative property. I'll just write down the result. Instead of regrouping 1 third and 3 together, I'll just show you the result. 1a. 1 third of 48 is 16. And then I have 1 times a is 16, so that's the same as a is equal to 16. So there's my solution, and that's true. If I substitute 16 for a in this equation, 3 times 16 is 48, so that is the solution to that equation. I found it by using the multiplication property for equality. Here's another one. Negative 3 fifths x is equal to 9 tenths. I'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 3 fifths, which is negative 5 thirds. Negative 5 thirds times negative 3 fifths x, and negative 5 thirds times 9 tenths. Negative 5 thirds times negative 3 fifths is 1 times x is x. And then, let's see, I'll divide out the common factor 5 there, and I'll divide out the common factor 3 here. So I end up with negative 3 halves for that solution. So I solve that equation, like I did the first couple of equations, by multiplying both sides through by the reciprocal of this number in front of x. Here's another example. This time I have negative 4a plus 3 on the left side of the equation, and on the right side I have negative 9. I need to get rid of both the 3 and the negative 4. The 3 is added to the variable. The negative 4 is multiplied times the variable. I get rid of addition with addition and multiplication with multiplication. I want to do the addition first, though. Negative 4a plus 3 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 9 plus negative 3. So I start with my addition property, adding negative 3 to both sides. Negative 4a plus 0 is negative 4a. And negative 9 plus negative 3 is negative 12. Next, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 4. So negative 1 fourth times negative 4a is the same as negative 1 fourth times negative 12. As long as I multiply, whatever I multiply the left side by, I multiply the right side by that exact same thing. I know I'll never change that solution set. Now, negative 1 fourth times negative 4 is 1 times a is a. So I end up with a on the left side. That's what I wanted. And negative 1 fourth times negative 12. A negative times a negative will be positive, And 1 fourth of 12 is 3. So I end up with a equal 3. Now we can just check this solution real quickly. If I take a equal 3 and replace it for a in the original equation, I have negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12, plus positive 3 is negative 9. So I end up with negative 9 equal negative 9. Sure enough, that is the solution to the equation. Here's one more problem. 
4x minus 7 plus 2x equals 9 minus 10. So first of all, I'm going to simplify each side as much as possible. So let me simplify this. 4x plus 2x is 6x minus 7 on the left side. And then 9 subtract 10 is negative 1 on the right side. I'm going to get rid of my negative 7 first with addition. 6x minus 7 plus 7 is equal to negative 1 plus 7. So whatever I add to one side, I add the same thing to the other side. That's the addition property. 6x plus negative 7 plus positive 7 is 6x plus 0, which is 6x. And on the right side, I have 6. I'll multiply both sides by 1 sixth, but I think you can see the solution is going to be x is equal to 1. Sometimes on this last step right here, we can actually see the solution. 6 times 1 is equal to 6, so I know that's my solution. If I substitute x equal 1 back into my original equation here and simplify both sides, you'll see I'll get a true statement. So there's a look at using that multiplication property of equality and also a couple of problems where we use both the addition property and the multiplication property.